This video is sponsored by that mobile game that you guys have definitely heard of. We have covered every single raid and raid layer inside of the Destiny franchise, all the way from Vault of Glass to Deepstone Crypt, where only one raid could be the best. Since Vault of Glass is coming back around to Destiny 2, this seems like the right time to make a raid ranking video. So let's do it. If you think that multiple raids are trying to achieve different goals and that by achieving those goals, they don't always compare to what I would like versus what you would like because we all have different experiences and characteristics to define what is subjectively better, then you are wrong. My list is the only list you can follow. Anyone else's, including your own, is just wrong. I'm sorry, guys, but let's get into the raid rankings. Let's pay some bills and thank today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Evan, don't do it. Don't do it. Raid Shadow Legends is the best raid ever made, baby. <sighs> hey, be nice to raid. It's their birthday. No, I'm not joking. It's actually raid's birthday. Two years since raid launched and raid is bigger and better than ever. Raid is the number one RPG worldwide, and I know this because I'm a savant of all mobile games. There's over a million daily players and over 2 billion battles for those players to participate in. So, with all those players in mind, and because it's Raid's birthday, Raid wants to say a big thank you for the memories, whether it be songs, the cosplays, to the creators, and the overall community. My champion I'm currently rocking right now is the Crusader, and I really like his rally attack if you want to hurt somebody and have a teammate help out. If you want to get a huge start in Raid, all you have to do is hit the link in the description or scan the QR code you're seeing right now on the screen, and you'll get a free epic champion, Jotun who is amazing for the Doom Tower. You also get 100k silver, 50 gems, 3 ancient shards so you can summon your champions as soon as you get in the game. Thank you to Raid for sponsoring this video. They are the best Raid after all, and enjoy the video. Because I don't want this video to be as long as one of these Raid videos, <coughs> I have decided that I'm going to go very quickly through my criteria as to what lends to being the best Raid in my eyes. A raid must check all of these boxes that you see, while also providing a unique experience. A raid must challenge the players pretty consistently until it becomes known to the wider audience, and even then should always have something that challenges the player to the point where they can't fall asleep participating in the raid. A raid needs to offer mechanics that don't just borrow heavily from others. They need to be unique to that raid. You should never have to tell yourself, that's just blank from blank raid. It should just flow on its own. Raids are played to keep players incentivized to return to the raid. So loot is a huge factor that goes into my rankings as well. Finally, my most subjective factor going into these rankings, I call it the fun factor of these raids. And trust me, you know what I mean. Raids that are just encounter after encounter without freedom of exploration, the ability to tackle an encounter in many different ways, etc. Let's just get on with my list so you guys know what I mean. I want to remind you guys to subscribe if you enjoy the content. It would mean a lot to me. Thank you. Alright guys, you know which raid belongs at the bottom. There isn't even a way to be sarcastic about the Eater of Worlds. Oh, Chess is here. We did it. Yeah. Wow. wow. We, did that was one we did a strike. Yeah. This one was the easiest one to place at the bottom for many reasons. The appeal of Eater of Worlds was that it was Bungie's first ever raid lair, but it came out during the lowest point of Destiny with a not so hot reception. While it does offer new mechanics, that doesn't mean they are always fun. In terms of loot, there was a shotgun and a grenade launcher. The armor was actually laughably bad and tried to be Dark Souls for no apparent reason. And in general, this raid layer just suffers from a lot of painfully boring encounters. You think I'm joking, but one of the encounters in this raid is standing still and killing a small group of enemies protecting a hole in the ground, while the previous encounter was to play a game of Leapfrog without any of the fun. I don't know who thought this was the best idea, but I just can't think of any fun doing this on repeated playthroughs. The most memorable portions worth noting are that it looks amazing being in the belly of the Leviathan, and it does have a pretty amazing final boss fight with creative mechanics. But that doesn't excuse the rest of it, and so we move on to our next raid, and forget about Eater of Worlds pretty quickly. Next up is... We are your salvation. 
This one may be surprising to some of you, and for the rest of you, this one comes as no surprise. Garden of Salvation is a great raid the first time through. Actually, let me clear that one up for you. Garden of Salvation is a great raid with Bungie's contest modifier turned on. This raid was a blast my first time through and it offered some unique boss fights and a setting unlike anything else for a raid inside of Destiny's Black Garden. But that's really it. Yeah, there's some things to love like the gorgeous set pieces and my personal favorite to this raid, the encounter Consecrated Mind. But with no real loot to care about, especially for the time since Mountaintop and Recluse were everything, the gear being an Eververse reskin which feels insulting, and the raid just simply being too easy after 24 hours, that's all I can love about Garden. I think the Garden of Salvation lost its charm after day one, and that's all. Next, if Garden of Salvation's issues were that it was a chore on replayability, then Scourge of the Past is the exact opposite. Do you always stand there saying nothing? Yeah, I know Scourge of the Past is a real barn burner being this low, but trust me, I, I love this raid. This raid is awesome. Scourge of the Past released when Destiny 2 was at its peak, in my opinion. Coming the Friday of Bungie's first ever season, this raid was easy for players on day one. This was the raid that made contest modifier for day one of brand new raids after because teams who hoarded bounties went into this one at max level and smoked it. Now then, if Garden was a great day one challenge and Scourge for those who played it on day one wasn't, why is Scourge ranked higher? The answer to that one is just pure fun factor, loot, and replayability. Garden of Salvation has players participating in Gambit most of the time, while Scourge has you go... I didn't mention this before, but Garden of Salvation did have a neat divinity quest, but I always prefer the RNG exotics, and no raid exotic has ever been better than Anarchy. So bonus points there as well. Other than that, this raid's replayability comes from freedom and nuance in tackling encounters. Want to beat the first encounter? How about a tank for that encounter? How about I kill myself while dunking to speed it up? How about I get someone in Russia to shoot this tank with me? APC, CAP, ACP, you name it. This raid is getting it. I think the thing holding this one back, however, is the challenge and lack of more encounters. The Sparrow section is great the first few times, but eventually it gets stale. If this one had another boss fight, maybe in the massive city and not against an armor shell, we have a pretty great raid here. But as it stands, I have to place it as number 10 on the list. Put your pitchforks down. Moving out of the city and into the Hellmouth, we have Crota. They're waking him. Crota Zen may be lower on a lot of your lists, and I can understand why. This raid is so easy that beating it solo is the preferred way for most players. But let me explain why it's number nine and not in last place. Crota had some juicy loot, including a future exotic named Black Hammer, the first anti-barrier weapons, and the creative crux of Crota to upgrade your Iodon Alley to Necrochasm. The loot was solid, the gear looked great, the raid was one of two to actually upgrade your character, and this raid was just pure fun. Yeah, it was easy and pretty buggy, but in a weird way, those bugs made it pretty special. By today's standards, this raid would be a dungeon, but then this was just a solo activity pretending to be a raid. Crota also had one of Destiny's most iconic mechanics in the sword mechanic to take Crota down, which would carry on still to this day. Trust me, it's not a great raid compared to today, but what Crota had was a special place in players' hearts for being a meme, and one that was just so replayable and so fun that it never felt like a chore. Yeah, is it biased? You're damn right! But I've played all these raids enough and at different times in life, so I think this is pretty correct. Thank you. In short, Crota was always on the menu. Moving on to number eight, and in a place far, far away, comes Destiny 2's first ever raid. Leviathan. <sighs> Leviathan was much better than I think some give credit for, and a lot worse than I think others give credit. Let's take it from the top. 
This raid had everything I believe a raid should have. New and unique mechanics, a new setting that definitely lended to exploration, and for the time it had the best loot in the game. So why so low on my list then? Well, where Leviathan succeeds, it also fails. Yes, there were unique mechanics and encounters that definitely felt new to the series, but that doesn't mean they stayed fun to play. Gauntlet and Baths on multiple playthroughs just dragged on and were way too mechanic dependent with Gauntlet especially being too punishing for a single mess up. Callus and Dogs both are great encounters that I think carry this raid, and while I love the idea of the underbelly, I feel there just needed to be an encounter down there to justify its existence even further. Before Leviathan left, it was very, very easy. But just like Eater of Worlds and a raid we'll get to later in this video, these were made for a double primary weapon meta and with half of the abilities we have today. Leviathan did offer a harder difficulty in the form of prestige, which altered some mechanics, but to be honest, I still don't think it made it better than the rest on our list. Leviathan's positives are the loot, the gear, the unique encounters providing nuance to the raid, but just as much the encounters are a net gain, they are also a net loss. While yes, it's nice doing some encounters that are all different, none of these really build off each other and it comes off like I'm playing mini games instead of a full on raid. Not to say this one was bad at all, just not as great as the remaining raids on our list. Speaking of which, let's talk about the next raid up, Crown of Sorrow. <laughs> Crown has one of the worst encounters of all time. Next to two of the best encounters of all time. The bridge encounter to start the raid was an absolute snooze fest, but the rest of the raid was actually great. Galron's Deception was one of my favorite encounters and so difficult on day one that it stopped most teams from getting the 24 hour emblem. Galron was one of the most iconic bosses I have ever seen in Destiny 2, and his encounter was somehow better than the deception before. That encounter still remains to me to be a perfect encounter and especially great with two players. The encounter may have been great past the first, but the loot outside of the shotgun just was not, and that includes the gear too. These rusty looking weapons just weren't worthy to be called raid weapons, especially when the seasonal activity, the menagerie, had better loot across the board and better looks across the board on the loot, giving less incentive to players participating in the raid. I think with a new first encounter and better loot, this raid would have way more replayability and lend harder into the fun factor. But with a unique variant of the Leviathan, this raid was very good. Next. Wow, so this list has been pretty fair so far, you know? There's been no controversy so far, like at all. None, right? YouTube comments, how we doing? I'm going to unsubscribe faster than normal. Okay, this one will put out the fire for sure. The best raid of the Leviathan is coming up next. Spire of Stars? I know this raid is pure difficulty and offers replayability to its difficulty. The first encounter is a played encounter, but not a bad one at all. The second encounter offers pure fun to explore the massive battery of the Leviathan and, come on, Val Kaor. Is Val Kaor, man? I love how this raid feels like the mechanics have a direct impact on what is going on with the raid. Like the third encounter's explosions directly telling the Leviathan how to attack incoming ships. It's awesome. The negatives to this raid are the awful looking reskins of Eater of Worlds armor and the weapons only being a sidearm and a fusion rifle. Also, this raid has some serious bugs on the final two encounters, which make it ever so stressful. The biggest compliment I can give this raid, however, was that it felt like it was made for six players and not less, which can't be said for a lot of these raids on multiple playthroughs. Spire of Stars was my favorite of the Leviathan raids because it lended to being challenging and fun to explore, especially with the second encounter having an iconic feel to the Leviathan that I wish the two previous raids had for me. Now, on to the next one. So now we're on to the top five. We're talking about the big boys, and there's only small things that separate them, but it doesn't mean I'm not here for chaos. So the fifth one on this list is... Vault of Glass. 
the original up to Age of Triumph because it hasn't come to Destiny 2 yet. Vault of Glass. Okay, speed running this one. Best loot in a raid bar none. Kind of too good since it made everything else not worth using. First three encounters are extremely boring, but it also gets credit for being the first in establishing the raid as the activity to be in. Iconic raid bosses, iconic mechanics, extremely fun and rewarding to explore with an atmosphere that really hasn't been matched. This is a great raid, but the opening three encounters take away from it being any higher on my list. Okay, slowing down now. The number four raid on my list, and one that I know a lot of you will definitely be agreeing with me on, right? Deep Stone Crypt. Yeah, our most recent raid is one of the best raids ever made in terms of loot with the first farmable system, encounters that make you feel like you're a part of a journey, and focusing a raid on the story of the game. The mechanics may be pretty much the same for the entirety of the raid, but they are used differently per encounter enough for me to be okay with that. A banging soundtrack, amazing boss fights, that feeling of a brand new setting for a raid, it all came together for Deepstone Crypt. Why then is this number four and not number one? Well, for two reasons. The first reason, and definitely the most subjective, is that the raid has Tanix, which I'm not sure why Tanix showed up as the raid boss, I kind of just didn't like how Tanix was used. And the second reason, it's so easy that you could fall asleep in here. Uh, yeah. So just, okay, Can we make wipe it through it. a set? Wipe it, wipe it. No. There, there was still top left, like nuke spawner. He was just giving me immune, even as operator. Are these vandals gonna, you guys gonna do something? We're, we're wiping. Um, no, I was waiting for the vandals to, to uh, there's uh, six of them staring at me. They're all just looking. <laughs> Oh, you're like, are you <laughs> I was like, Vandals, you want to get it together? I didn't want to make this point a long, long time ago when the raid first came out, because back then, not all of you had beaten the raid. But now that time has passed, can we all see that Deepstone Crypt is just way too easy? Bungie may have updated Atrax Shanks to be snipers now, and the Out of Bounds have been patched for the most part, but this raid just doesn't challenge players the way it should. I'm not sure if it's the AI of the Fallen here, or if it's just the low health of Atrax in tandem with Tanix giving players so much time for DPS, but this one can be laughable. I love this raid, and I think it's Bungie thinking outside the box a lot, but man, I can just turn my brain off during this one, and for the pinnacle activity, I don't think that should be the case. I've said it before, and we'll say it again, the top five only have small differences, but it gets extremely difficult in the top three. So let's clear the air and just say that these three are so close to each other. All right? King's Fall is number three. <laughs> this raid is unbelievably iconic with all bosses looking like they could be a final boss, challenging encounters for a long time to most players and some damn nice looking gear. The small problems I have with this one come from the weapons being a major downgrade compared to the previous year's raids. The awful plate mechanics in the totems, sisters, and oryx encounter, and oryx being the worst part of the raid on multiple playthroughs. This big badass with Destiny's first ever final stand was a fight that was a guaranteed four phases of damage. Fun the first couple times, but it never felt like Oryx lended to players getting better. He was just the set piece boss more than anything. Had King's Fall not lended to as many plates, had the loot been a bit better, and had Oryx not been a set piece, this one would have definitely been number one. But as it stands, the King falls short of the next two. Number two on my list. I will give you like 10 seconds to guess in the comments. You ready? Dum da da dum da da dum da da dum. Wrath of the Machine. Those of you who watch my Destiny 1 list know this all too well as far as my reasons why Wrath is my favorite raid in Destiny 1 and the second best raid ever made. Wrath just doesn't have a single bad encounter. Wrath gives challenge every time so players can't fall asleep. All six players have a role to play and mechanics lend to freedom of playstyle. This raid is just metal too. 
music is perfect the combat is close quarters and in your face there's a mad max tank it's siva infested axis is unbelievably iconic with a million ways to kill him and even an optional mechanic to make the fight even better the more time you put in the loot isn't too overpowered and it just had some better versions of the perks that were already in the game i would go out on a limb and say that deep stone crypt took inspiration from this raid the most but this raid is just a few steps above it i just love wrath The moment you skipped ahead in this video for, the moment some of you knew was coming if you watched my streams, and the moment Destiny 2 Forsaken became legendary. Meet Last Wish. I've waited so long to fulfill one last wish. Last Wish gets the same credit as Wrath of the Machine in the fact that there isn't a single bad encounter, but it goes further than Wrath by having more encounters, more loot, more nuance in approaching those encounters, more exploration. It has not only two final stands for Riven, but an encounter after Riven. Speaking of after Riven, this raid also unlocks a ton of activities in Destiny after the day one completion something Deepstone Crypt tried to replicate, but just couldn't really hold a candle to. This raid is a wish wall, which is a video we're gonna make soon, a ton of small details that I could go on about for hours, an atmosphere unlike any other since Vault of Glass, and it stayed challenging for months without a hard mode or a contest mode. The loot was pretty damn solid, and it introduced random rolls on raid weapons for the first time ever. The only things I wish I could walk up to the wish wall for in this one is a true hard mode and forcing players to complete Riven the way it was intended to be completed. It's the best encounter ever made in a raid, but can be cheesed very easily. I wish players got to see what it was all about, but maybe that will change when Bungie adds master difficulty to all the raids at some point. Either way, this raid is just unmatched in my eyes and is always worth playing over and over again. Thank you, Last Wish, for being, in my eyes, the best raid ever made. So those are my favorite raids ranked from worst to best, and yeah, that one was a long one. I figured since Vault of Glass will be the next raid coming out, that this was the appropriate time to make a video on these raids ranked. Just know that if my list is different from yours, you're probably wrong. No, I'm joking. You're definitely wrong. If you did enjoy this video, a like would be greatly appreciated as well as a subscription. If you want to talk about this, make some fun memories and have a fun time in chat, come by my Twitch and all my socials. You guys and gals have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time. See the boss in the kind of the damage after. Not even he is safe from the physics. The yeah. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. I can't. I can't. I I I I literally I literally peek out for a split second. I peek out for a split second. And I, I'm already dead because I can't get out of the way. Yep, yep, that shot didn't connect, so it doesn't. Yeah.